Hello. Hi. Uh, Hello. Hi. Um, my name is Jalen Mack. Uh, I'm interviewing a lot of harp artists. Uh, that's the Here Art Center uh, resident artist program. Uh, uh, and talking to them about their projects. We're doing it for HowlRound. Um, and if you don't know about HARP, HARP is this wonderful program that here has had for many years. I started off at the program, in the program. Um, and uh, they give you space. They, uh, they give you a many years to workshop your, your, your piece, many opportunities. Um, the understanding was that, that artists need time to make their stuff, especially generating artists and time to meditate on what they're doing and time with audiences. So instead of that kind of three week regional theater, like get it in and get it out kind of process, um, those of us who are making our own work uh, need a different kind of process. So uh, here came around and said, well, here's, a, here's an organization that's gonna help you do that. Um, and you can model it however you want to. Um, and they've been doing really good. <laughs> for many years and these are two of the harp artists that uh, are making a piece <laughs> and i'm going to let you introduce yourselves and also introduce your piece why don't, why don't we do it that way <laughs> okay yeah so i start so i'm yeah. sachio takahashi and then um i'm a composer and then uh, for both for sound and visual megami uh, my name is Gamin. I'm a musician. I play Korean traditional wind instruments. Um, so I studied traditional music in Korea and I'm exploring more like new music, experimental sounds. Uh, and I started to collaborate with Sachu last year uh, during pandemic. <laughs> so we are very happy to be part of, you know, here artist residence program, but it's been a um, challenge because we were not yeah, able to access the place and we were not actually, you know, meet in person. So we yeah. were doing kind of, you know, virtual collaboration and we, we filmed at the theater at the moment uh, for, for, you know, uh, presentation last, last year, uh, November. Mm -hmm. uh, but it was really great opportunity for us to be able to, you know, collaborate uh, with here our center. And 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 let, let me just ask about your piece. You're making a, you're making a um, well. How would you describe it? A soundscape. Uh, what, what, um, I know it's about emotions. And why don't you give us a little information about about it? Okay. So. Um... We are primarily calling it like music theater, but it's uh -huh. not really traditional sense that uh, um, we are both musicians. So like uh, our starting point is music. And uh -huh. uh, also like uh, kind of uh, we are from Asia and sort of the idea of this project is kind of uh, digging out those em emotional heritage from the traditional sound and uh, storytelling. Mm. like a uh, music and kind of uh, sort of using those materials to create a contemporary take on on the on the, the emotions but mm. uh, mainly it's sound but actually the other aspect is we have a visual uh, components to it mm -hmm. and um, we have actually live um, live projection which I have been doing for long. Time. So when you when you say live projection, yeah, uh, yeah, describe that. What is that? So live projection is basically I have been developing this art form called microscopic live cinema theater. Yes, please. <laughs> <laughs> for kind of more than ten years. So the, uh -huh. what I have been doing was that I have a very small um, tabletop, basically tape tabletop and then I manipulate small object on this tabletop using the video camera and the project live onto a screen like enlarged uh -huh. magnified. So yeah. um so you're a little bit like a visual folio artist does that yes. make sense you know yeah sort of like Is kind that... of live animation if it's well like it's uh -huh. uh, actually kind of like um I'm sort of in the category of the puppetry as well in uh -huh. this uh, New York City yeah. puppetry com community just because I manipulate objects 
um, but uh, um, so the thing is, um, it's it's done in life, and then also the kind of the things I do is like magnification of the small object or um, small material. So like what is my material? Some if you go very deep into this kind of uh, the details of the object, somehow I, I found some emotion in there sometimes. <laughs> and then that was kind of like also the, um, how I came to this um, project. So, okay, so like there's a sound component because I'm a musician, I play uh, instrument as well, traditional instrument, as well as I create the uh, electro-acoustic soundtracks. Uh, yeah, I wanted to ask you about that too, but finish, <laughs> finish your thought. Okay. So the, <laughs> I was like, electroacoustic, okay, what's okay, that? Okay, <laughs> okay. So the first of all, okay, so this project is music, uh -huh. uh, live music, and live uh, visuals that I manipulate this thing. And also uh, we are going to have some sort of uh, object ma manipulation in space. So it's much kind of like a bigger actual object uh, moving in the space or somehow doing something in the space. Uh -huh. <laughs> and then, uh, we will be working with some pu puppeteers. And then also the other component we are thinking is lighting. Mm -hmm. Because uh, lighting traditionally, I don't know, but it's kind of in the theater, usually it's kind of like, a, okay, so story and additionally uh, lighting. But mm -hmm. lighting could be a very big uh, component to express yeah. some sort of emotion. <laughs> yeah, have you talked to Shia, Maria? Um, no. Oh, he's a, he's also a harp artist. Um, uh, LeMay is their company and he ah. designs and they use light in their shows as a character really, or as a scene partner. Mm -hmm. um, they're very, they, they think of the lighting. Um, I think I've heard uh, uh, Yehima uh, um, uh, describe it as, uh, a as composition that the lighting is part of the composition. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah it's, yeah. it's so it, it, yeah. Mm -hmm. We're, <laughs> we're yeah, having yeah, a yeah. conversation with him. He's yeah, quite it's, extraordinary. Exactly, it's kind of and like also that. from Japan. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I know, I know them. Yeah, the Himena yeah, yeah. and then the Shige. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yes. So yeah. the yeah lighting could be almost like uh, yeah. Uh, the same same as the music component or visual component and then uh, lighting could be mingled to become a one one composition basically uh -huh. so, and then um, other thing is we want probably using so much uh, language in this piece so it's sort of abstract but it's uh -huh. not, uh, not uh, uh, entirely uh, like a live concert because we will have some sort of um, abstract storytelling, kind of abstract narrative, I don't know what to call. <laughs> so uh, there's some sort of trajectory of the, of the story uh -huh. in the piece, yeah. but told through all those sound, visual and object uh -huh. movement and lighting. So that's and, the songs, and, and the songs themselves are, um, uh, and I mean, please feel free to jump in here. Um, the the songs are are taken. Um, I know that they're original songs, but they're the, they're working off of themes of traditional songs um, from uh, Japan or Korea, or or a mixture of. Yes, uh, actually, yeah. we tried to uh, play some uh, traditional song, uh -huh. uh, and also we try to create new song based on storytelling, traditional storytelling. Uh -huh. So uh, we, we had a presentation uh, last year and uh, I brought one Korean traditional tune that I played with my uh, PD, which is bamboo flute. Uh -huh. And Sachio played um, Japanese traditional storytelling, you know, uh, song piece, very traditional piece. And then we actually create one uh, new song based on traditional Korean, um, you know, storytelling, which is kind of a legend and mysterious story. Uh, and that has lyrics and dance piece. Mm -hmm. But we transformed uh, totally, you know, uh, new way with 
electroacoustic sound and <laughs> <I've got> out. <laughs> and uh, some composition. So the song is combined, you know, between composition, improvisation, and you know, electroacoustic sound. You know, so it's a whole different <laughs> different shape. <laughs> but uh -huh. we used some idea from from the traditional uh, storytelling because it is very interesting way to explore, you know, human emotion. If you see, um, you know, old story from Japan and Korea, uh, you can explore something new, new um, expression or a new new way of emotion. It's uh -huh. it's very unique. So yeah. The song. And has that been a challenge to combine the two cultures and then and in your thinking of how to present it to a, such a multifaceted culture like, like, that the U.S. has? Is that to, to take Japanese culture and Korean culture and squish them together and then present it to an even more multifaceted culture? Or is it just, does it, has it felt natural or is it, you know, what kind of techniques are you using? Um, so it's kind of interesting thing. It's like I met Gamin a few years few years ago and mm -hmm. uh, we started to just uh, you know start some kind of like small collaborations and uh, although we are from okay Asia but mm -hmm. uh, uh, it's of course it's kind of different <laughs> we don't yeah. speak a different I mean, language or I mean one country is very different from the right. other <laughs> right. and then somehow I think it's we are what we have been doing is like we get to know each other through music uh -huh. you know what yeah, she yeah. plays and what the I play it's kind of like a conversation through art and music and then uh -huh. I started to understand what's similar and sorry there's some kind of construction going on <laughs> don't worry about um, it don't worry. what's similar and what's different and then you know ultimately okay we can emphasize the differences too uh -huh. but also there are a lot of like common ground uh -huh. you know we are human <laughs> And then, right. <laughs> and then also, the, I think. Could you could you describe a couple of the common grounds, like? Um, 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 yeah. Basically, I think actually, you know, it's uh, like um, with Gamin and me, like certain actually melodic like uh, structure or like uh -huh. called, like to express certain certain feeling has a similarity. Mm. Because mm -hmm. like uh, some of the Japanese uh, traditional music like also came from Bayer, you know, uh, China and Korea. Mm -hmm. So, and then it, it's now, you know, went into this pop music and then more contemporary music, but it's kind of connected to in the, through this kind of uh, continent. So it's mm -hmm. actually element wise there, are, like some of the sounds uh, has very uh, kind of similarity to it, uh, chord, some similarity to it. So like, uh, for this, um, like, uh, um, so in, in some sense, actually, like, if we uh, kind of like uh, followed all those routes, maybe we do, it also even like it can go to like Europe, or mm -hmm. you know, kind of. Uh, then you know, it's kind of um, it's not 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 that like disconnected in some sense. Mm -hmm. Even though, mm -hmm. like, uh, for the uh, Western ear, like sounds could be foreign, but the, uh, some of the maybe folk songs, like even some um, some sort of um, more older, um, like natives maybe songs or something like could have like a similarity to it too. So it's, mm -hmm. I think it's, um, I don't know, just the- uh, uh, Yeah. So I think the one addition is that, uh, one thing I see like me and Gami have in common is that, uh, um, we are uh, we both play traditional instruments and traditional music, but uh, we are contemporary uh, artists, musicians. Mm -hmm. Well, so it's like always kind of our interest is almost discovering this new material in old thing, so that we mm -hmm. can kind of use it for the new creation. Yeah, or like yeah, some yeah. Contemporary that's what most. Of, enjoy, that's what right? a lot of us are doing. <laughs> A lot exactly. of us are just taking old things and you know trying to apply them to our our, our current circumstance. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So in a sense, it's actually not that weird. 
and then no uh, it doesn't seem weird at all it seems mm-hmm. wonderful yeah. <laughs> I'm, i've listened to some of it it's uh, it like goes right to your bones i mean the right to your heart too and um and so i i guess i have that question about um I you know your pieces. You're taking different emotions, and you're and you're writing pieces about them. And but and so the question becomes: uh, is, is it about the emotion, or is it um, unearthing the emotion in the audience, or in the players, or uh, or some kind of combination of all of that together? I mean, do you want to? I think we uh, we are kind of you know taking journey mm-hmm. of the emotion. Um, so when we play the music, we 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 took some uh, traditional story. So there is a character in the story. So we we um, we put some um, emotion. We can you can imagine you know how this character you know fears about you know this happening, and you know we 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 kind of imagine you know the feeling and emotion, and we take journey through those character and also i think we when we um, when we imagine those you know character emotion we also uh, put our emotion you know how how would i fear you know how would mm-hmm. i you know uh, uh, express those feelings so that is uh, probably mixed the original story and our emotion like a reflection and that come through um, some new language. We, we play it like, you know, uh, some contemporary uh, sound with electroacoustic, you know, so it's come through new, um, new, new material, new sound. And that also give audiences to take a journey, their own mm-hmm. journey. So they yeah. can, I, I, we expect audiences, um, experience where they take journey with their own emotion so uh-huh. no matter so you're not telling them and now we're playing happiness <laughs> like you're not yeah. saying that yeah. you're letting them experience it if they experience right. it yeah, yeah right yeah yeah um and okay now and talk to me about electroacoustic what is electroacoustic it sounds right up my alley <laughs> Electroacoustic music is actually a genre, genre of music, so it's uh-huh. it's a, I'm not really making the things up. Yeah, 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 yeah. So yeah, I just um, never paid attention to it. Yeah, so it's <laughs> elect. You probably know more like electro music. Yeah. Right. It's it's yeah. kind of a digital, you know, sort of uh, processed um, sound uh-huh. created by mainly computation or like synthesizer or something those yeah. are like electro music electro acoustic music has a little bit of um okay acoustic in it <laughs> and historically it's uh it kind of like went back to uh like a music concrete so concrete like a concrete music so like this kind of tradition so like uh, uh, a lot of things that uh, it's you know sorry like i'm doing the rec- lecture of this but <laughs> Um, so idea of this is, so, um, before like music concrete, basically the, the vocabulary of the music was, you know, instrument or voice or like those kind of things was the source of the musical material, but the music concrete basically made the, you know, like a sound like this into uh-huh. the vocabulary of the, the music. Got it, so got it. you, you record it record the different uh, sound in the world and uh-huh. then you can use those material as a as a part of your musical composition mm. and then we um like electro acoustic music also you know it's it's really everybody's doing like a different things but it's kind of uh, you process those sound natural sound natural sound is almost like a, actually natural sounds all has a shapes Mm. In, in this kind of thing like it's like a mm. sculpting the, the sound almost yeah. you know yeah but like then a, you play but then you play you'll play your your instruments uh along with it so you'll play these live with the mm-hmm. electro acoustic okay. right right yeah. so what i did what we did for the um like a work in progress uh presentation the our duo that i think we are going to show later yeah. is that uh, uh, 
we recorded like uh, the gamins like instrument sound, my instrument sound, and I processed it to create a new layer of the soundtrack. So as a sound material, it's actually kind of the same uh, uh, source, mm -hmm. but almost uh, creating the kind of contemporary layer to, the, <laughs> to it. <laughs> and then creating those, uh, it's, it's quite, uh, um, I don't know, interesting things we can do with those technique. Uh, it's actually all, you know, I'm sitting in front of the computer to create this kind of music, but mm. uh, um, you can create those uh, the mass of the sound or, you know, kind of uh, very, I think, effective, uh, like vocabulary of the music to create, uh, I don't know, some sort of like, uh, yeah, emotional thing <laughs> it, without actually relics or just uh, could it be purely like a sound but uh, uh -huh. yeah it's... And, and when you're making both of you when you're making your music uh and 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 in process with this work is there an intention for um uh, i always kind of talking about it in terms of are you are you intending to or how are you intending to care for the audience or do you not care are you just making what you want to make and the audience ex experiences it how they they make it um how they experience it uh, so it's a it's a question that i think is interesting for a lot of um people who are working outside of uh commercial uh commercial theater and commercial music is is uh, what's the intention behind it and um mm. and yeah what are the what are the what what drives you to explore what you're exploring i guess is another way of saying it yeah because when we started to create this project we were interested in human emotion but the way mm -hmm. of expression is so different you know, depending on culture, yeah. depending on personality, depending on you know, character or whatever. Right. You know. So I was wondering, you know, how, you know, how, how different, you know, and uh, some same happening uh, for, for many different people. I mean, every people, every single people probably have different, <laughs> different way of expression. Yeah. And, and yeah. In culturally, you know, um, there are different types different structure to, you know, express some feeling or, you know, so we were very much curious about, you know, those different, um, different status, different emotion expression. So we were hoping, you know, audiences to experience, experience their own journey, <laughs> mm -hmm. no matter what we, we, we intend or, you know, we, we, mm -hmm. we try to, you know, um, express, but we, uh, we more, yeah, we more open to, you know, journey, you know, discover like a new, you know, emotional journey. <laughs> That's the actually um, uh, the goal that we uh -huh. want to. Yeah. Yeah, so you do. You set you you have a goal for your audience, even if it's not um, that they experience the exact same journey together. <laughs> you you do mm -hmm. want them to go through. Right. Yeah. So you're. It's not just. Um, you're not just chasing your, your your own kind of taste. I guess. No, that, it's yeah. it's not. Um, it's. I would say it's. You know, like if you have um, very well composed, uh, very well um, like uh, um, designed uh, like music album or something, you go mm -hmm. through the sort of uh, experience, like, you know, if you hear from the first to the end. And then, but that's a, like a kind of the, some sort of taste of the artist or like something that they maybe want to come through, like through this album. Mm -hmm. uh, um, but actually, you don't really. Maybe, maybe everybody has a different, uh, different thing, different experience from this thing. But it's kind of guided, sort of like a guided journey rather than like mm -hmm. an open-ended journey. So like uh, yeah. we do uh, have some something that we are doing that we will know, <laughs> but yeah, we yeah. might not explain it like uh, too much in uh -huh. like beforehand, so that uh, uh, open enough that the people can 
can enjoy their own journey, but also guide it in, into the, like, it's not really like, you know, you are going to the sea or sky. Okay, we are going to the sky. <laughs> but like right. from there, you know, this kind of like, uh, uh, but I, I think we will have a pretty uh, kind of clear direction. <laughs> Yeah. But you are you are free to to you know like wander around there. <laughs> That's kind of the style. Yeah, and and at what point you've been working on it for a year now? But COVID has kind of interrupted that. Is that true? That's that's the point in your process. Yes. Yeah, and yes. so uh, um, and when do you think? Do you have a, any kind of sense of when you're going to actually do it, or are you are you still ex experimenting? <laughs> we are still experimenting and we yeah. are uh, planning Even with to process. experiment more with yeah. many different Good. materials. So yeah. this is our journey <laughs> to explore yeah. And, yeah. and we are enjoying process, you know, how uh -huh. we you know, dream and how we, you know, uh -huh. uh, collaborate and how we're going to, you know, bring other material to this project. So uh, this is like a long, long uh, process. <laughs> yeah, Hopefully it's a question I've, I've asked a, a lot of the artists is the, it, how much of process is actually the art for you? Um, or how, you know, that, that uh, it, it is the process part of the art, not just because not just you have to do it in order to make the piece, but is it actually getting together and working? Is that also the art? Um, and, and even playing in a room, um, it, 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 I, I imagine that there's a lot of room for variation every time you play. Is that true? Yes. Oh, yeah. Yes, yeah. yes. Yeah. Because we started to improvise very beginning. Mm -hmm. And then yeah. we put some composition. So whenever we played, we have different, um, different sense, different sound. Yeah. And yeah, that's very interesting uh, part. We can, yeah. you know, variate many different ways. Yeah. Yeah. It's the fun part of the, the heart program, I think, is that you know, people can come and see the the process, which then becomes part of the art of their experience of the piece. You know, they can come multiple times over many years to see uh, a, a work um, be created, and and so in that sense, they they end up becoming a collaborator <clears throat> in the creation of the piece. It's it's a fascinating way to work. Um, I want to ask you before we go, uh, just is there anything that you need right now from the larger community? What do you, do, do you need money? Do you need um, time, <laughs> rehearsal space, care? Do you need attention? Do you need, <laughs> do you need stories? Do you need people to, uh, <laughs> I don't know, do you need people to bring you flowers? What do you need from the larger community? <laughs> um, well, yeah, all of them could be really nice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I need definitely. all of them. <laughs> yeah, definitely. But yeah. I think actually, um, yeah, just like added to this, like when when question that uh, I heard something like 2024, like uh, to uh -huh. have a premiere. So it's like because of the COVID, it's kind of a little bit of, uh, so I don't know, maybe 2023, 2024, but it's, yeah, Still, but like, that just means there's a lot of time for everyone to yeah. check in with what you're making. Yeah. And then every, every uh, like so much time for people to get interested. And then, yeah. you know, if they want to send us some, anything. <laughs> 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 but it's more of the things, I think our interest here is kind of um, through this project, like we want to meet people, <laughs> you mm. know, like uh, both of us are relatively new to, New York City or US. Uh -huh. So um, uh -huh. yeah, part, part of this, our hope through this project is like, uh, you know, creating some community. Yeah. That, uh, yeah, yeah we yeah. can share like uh, our background yeah. and then also creating some new things, collaborating with some other artists and getting yeah. the audience. I mean, we have, we have so much theater and, and um, I guess what they call new music in uh, in New York City, and yet it feels like we're in real need of what you both are bringing to the uh, to this. Uh, we we need we need different sounds and different perspectives. So <laughs> can I, I can I ask yeah. uh, one thanks to you? Yeah, yeah, please. <laughs> because like uh, I actually never had a chance to show your work in life. 
Yeah, yeah. Like I'm looking for, I can, I can be like looking forward to the next, uh, you know, live occasion. But I, yeah. I watched your videos, and then uh. you work, work always like uh, kind of like outside of the box, right? Um, really? I mean, yes, for the most part, yeah. There's always and some kind just... of element that's outside the box. <laughs> <laughs> sort of actually, kind of like, uh, I want to know how sort of like you. Because you yeah, well, like you it. have a you have a heteronym, <laughs> don't you? I mean, uh, do you know what I had? I, I just learned this phrase the other day. I, I guess it's been around for a while, and I didn't know it. It's called a heteronym, which is a kind of an alternative personality who you know makes art. <laughs> and you have one, don't you? Don't you have a um a per, another performance name that you oh, go me? by? Oh yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. That's it. When yeah. I perform traditional Japanese storytelling, like Shinai Bushi, like I have a stage name. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. And why did you choose a, a, a performance name for that, for that type of work? Oh, those are like, it's a traditional work. So like I basically, my master gave me this name. So it's oh, a really? qualified, yes, it's that kind of stuff. Ah. So it's uh, Okamoto school is the, this traditional storytelling school. And then yeah. um, basically- We would just call that our drag name. No, <laughs> I would call that my drag name. <laughs> But but could it be a sorry like there's some yeah you know. um yeah so but it's kind of interesting to have like alternative uh like personality because yeah I I do have it yes yeah but but, but what I was kind of like interested in is like yeah just kind of the like the way that you 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 sort of like break out from the from the norm and then uh, uh, something that we w w are trying to do in some sense so kind of like well i think you've you already done it me, i think you've already done it by coming to new york city i mean you've broken out of whatever norm you were raised in and you come to new york city and uh so in some ways um you are already out of the norm and that is thrilling and exciting. So I think you just have to do you, you know, mm. <laughs> you just have to just make what, you know, um, because context is everything, isn't it? You know, you, you, <laughs> like, like if you, put, you could put the most traditional um, Arthur Miller play in the world, uh, on a stage in, in a, a town that's never seen theater and they would call it experimental, you know? So um, it's, I think it's, that's the fun part. Mm -hmm. We just, I, I don't really think of myself as experimental. I think I, I'm just um, taking parts of culture that most people aren't used to seeing and bringing it to them. I think that's kind of more what I do. Yeah. And just audience yeah. follows you, I mean, uh, kind of, uh, gradually, I, like, I guess that's how what's happening now. Yeah, I always kind of feel like I have to start over with every project, but <laughs> oh. I don't know. Does is that how? I mean, you must have. I know you. Uh, I mean, didn't you just perform at Carnegie Hall? Is that true? Oh yeah, I actually was supposed to perform at Carnegie Hall last year March. Oh no, it got canceled. It got canceled oh. and postponed. <laughs> We never I'm know so when sorry. it's gonna happen again. <laughs> yeah, that's very disappointing. Yeah, oh, I'm so sorry. Well, it, it's gonna happen again. Yeah. Yeah, I they'll, hope so. The book, you. Yeah. yeah. How that? Please, and and actually, I'm not so sorry because I want to come see you. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. See you perform in that beautiful space. <laughs> I'm assuming it was the smallest space, or was it the big hall? Were, were you gonna perform in? Do you know which theater? Uh, uh, Zanken. Zanken. Uh -huh. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's beautiful. The acoustics are extraordinary in there. Um, yeah. Well, next time. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> definitely. Um, yeah. So I, I just want to thank you both for talking. And uh, is there anything else you'd like to say about the piece or share or any anything like that? uh yeah no thank you so much for having thank us you so much. And... <laughs> yeah and yeah. and so we're gonna uh cut to a work sample um a, a work in progress that they've shown uh that they made a little video of and so we'll we'll cut to that <laughs> and thank you all very much for tuning in <laughs> thank you so much bye-bye thank you, thank you. Great to talk to you. <laughs>